I am Vaibhav Shivastha from Vaibhav E-Learning Academy. Today we are going to start a new topic in Max class 10 that is circles. In today's video we are going to discuss about what is a circle, introduction that is what is the definition of a circle, what is the relation between line and a circle, a line and a circle how are they both related, then we will see what is a tangent, then we will see some theorems, we have two theorems in our syllabus, you are going to see that and then we are going to practice some questions. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Today we are going to complete the whole circle chapter in one video. So I hope you enjoyed. So let us start with the first and foremost important question that is what is a circle? So if we ask ourselves a question what is a circle? We will just say anything which is round is known as a circle. Suppose we draw a circle over here. This is a circle. But how do we define this? What is this thing? So the definition of circle is that the locus of, let me write it down, the locus connecting all the points in a plane from a fixed distance. is called circle. Now the locus, locus means path. The path which is connecting all the points in a plane from a fixed distance is called a center at a fixed, at, is called a circle, uh, fixed distance from a fixed point at a fixed point is called circle. So here, what is a fixed point? What do we mean by this? So locus means the path. So suppose there is a center over here. We call this as O. Fixed point. This fixed point is called as center. Center of the circle. Now the locus means the path connecting all the points in a plane. This board is a plane. From a fixed distance at a fixed point. Suppose we take some distance over here and we consider a point A. Let this distance be 5 cm. Now same we take 5 cm over here and we see one other point B. Similarly we have one more 5 cm over here point C, 5 cm over here point D. These are 4 points. Like this there are infinite number of points. Like this. So we can see that when we join this all, all these points if we join, we get a shape. And this shape is called as a circle. So hence, what we can say? The locus. Locus is the path connecting all the points in a plane. All these points are in a single plane. That is a 2D plane of the board. From the fixed distance at a fixed point. This distance is fixed. If you take this point, this point is also at a 5 cm distance. This point is also at a 5 cm of distance. So it is a fixed distance. And this fixed distance is called as radius. And at a fixed point is called a circle. So when you connect all them, we get a circle. Hence, this was the definition of what is a circle. Now let us see what are the parts of a circle. These are very basic topics which you all know. Here, this is the center of the circle. The line joining the center with the point on the circle is known as radius. A radius is actually nothing but a center to the point of a circle is called as a radius, the distance. And when you combine or when you take a line which runs through the center of the circle, that line is called as a diameter. If there is a line which connects two points in a circle, this is called as a chord. The chord divides the circle into two parts and the parts are on a segment. Major segment. And the smaller part is known as a minor segment. Okay. Now the part of the circle which is in the major segment, this part is known as an arc. What is an arc? Arc is nothing but a part of a circle. Now this is one arc. If we complete the arc, we will get a circle. Hence, we have over here a major arc. And this one is the minor arc. These are the basic terms which are related to a circle. 
Now let us move on to an interesting topic that is what is a relation between a line and a circle. Now meaning of relation is that if we take a circle and if we put a line beside it, on it or into it, what is the relation which we can get? Let me write that down over here. Relation between circle and line. So we are going to take three cases, case number one, case number two and case number three. In the first case, we are taking this is a line and this is a circle. In the second case, this is again the circle. This time the line is touching the circle and going. And the third case is, this is a circle and the line is crossing it. Now over here, what is this? This is a circle. And what is this? It is a line. Here, there is no relation between the circle and the line because both are separate entities. But now looking at this one, we see that the line touches the circle at a single point. Then this line is known as tangent. Now what is a tangent? A line which touches the circle at a single point. So any line which touches the circle at a single point. Here you can see that this line touches the circle at a only single point. So then this line is known as a tangent and the circle is as it is. Now this is a line which is crossing the circle. Now this many people get confused between this thing. This is known as a secant. So many people get confused between what is a secant and what is a chord. Suppose like this. Now what is this? This is actually a chord. The basic difference is that chord is a line segment. Chord has ends and secant does not have any end. The secant comes from a distant point and then it cuts the circle into two parts and it goes away. A chord just cuts the circle but the secant cuts the circle into two half and secant touches the circle at two different points. So hence these are the three relations between the circle and line. When a line and a circle are separate entities there is no relation. When the line touches the circle at a single point then that line is known as tangent. So what is a tangent? A line which touches the circle at a single point. Then we have a secant. What is a secant? When a line is crossing a circle cutting it into two different parts then that is known as a secant. Now this tangent concept is one of the most important uh, concept in our 10th class. So first of all we are going to see some terms which are related to tangent and we are going to see some of the important points which are related to the tangents. So let us see the tangents. So first of all what is a tangent? A line, any line that touches one part of the circle and goes or we can say it as a line which touches the circle at a single point is a tangent. Now let us draw a circle. Now let us draw a tangent. Let us name this tangent as a, B, C. So tangent is actually, tangent, this is actually known as tangent A, C touching a circle with center O. Let us take the center of the circle is O at a point B. Now this is a tangent. AC is a tangent which is touching a circle at center O. With center O, the circle has a center O at a point B. This point B is known as the point of contact. Point of contact. This point of contact, related to this we have a theorem that whenever this point of contact is drawn a line with a radius, it makes 90 degree. We are going to prove that theorem in the next section of this video. But for now we are seeing the properties of tangent. So first thing, tangent touches the circle at only a single point. It is touching at only a single point, hence this is a tangent. How do we name a tangent? Tangent AC touching a circle at with center O at a point B. 
and the point at which the tangent touches the circle, that point is known as the point of contact. Now, we are going to see some of the properties. First one is, infinite tangents can be drawn in a circle. First property, infinite tangents can be drawn in a circle. Okay. How are infinite tangents drawn? Let us suppose this point over here. We can draw a tangent like this, which touches it. Let us suppose a point over here. This can be a tangent. Over here, this can be a tangent. This can be a tangent. So hence we see that we can draw infinite number of tangents. But at a point, only one tangent can be drawn. Only one tangent can be drawn at a point. So suppose let us take this point. At this point we drew one tangent. Now is there any another way of drawing a tangent? No, we cannot draw. Because if we, draw, if we try to draw on another tangent, it might pass through it. So it might not be a tangent. Hence there is no other method of making another tangent at a particular point. Suppose there is an A C. Tangent AC. For example, we are going from A to C. This is a tangent. If you go from C to it, that is also the same tangent. Hence, only one tangent can be drawn at a point. And the last third point is that two tangents can be parallel. Two tangents can be parallel. How? Suppose over here we have the tangent AC. Now, if we take one more tangent over here. Uh, D E F. We see that tangent A C and tangent D E these both are parallel to each other. So how many tangents can be parallel? Only two tangents can be parallel because there is no third tangent which we can draw between them. So main point is infinite number of tangents can be drawn on a circle. On a circle you can draw infinite amount of tangents. Only one tangent can be drawn at a particular point. If you take this point, only one tangent is drawn, not more than one. And two tangents can be parallel. It means only two tangents can be parallel. One tangent over here, one tangent over here. You can't draw any tangent in between. If you try to draw like this, this becomes a secant, not a tangent. Hence, we have completed two topics. What is a circle? What is the relation between circles? That three topics, circles, relation between line and circle. And then we have discussed about tangent. Now, let us move on to the theorems, which are related to these tangents and then questions. So, let us... So now we are going to discuss about some theorems in the circle. Starting with the first theorem, the first theorem states that the tangent through any point on the circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. So what is the meaning of this? For that we need to draw a diagram over here. Suppose this is a circle and then this is a tangent over here. So this is A, C. It is a line of course. Now what they have given that, the tangent through any point on the circle, let this point be B, is perpendicular to the radius. Okay. Now let the circle have a center O. Now when you draw a radius over here, what they mean to, like what the theorem states is that, it is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. It means that according to the theorem, the radius and the tangent are perpendicular to each other. This is one theorem and this theorem we are going to use in many problems. Now we are going to prove it. How is it? Negative. One thing we know that, so we know that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Suppose this is one point and this is another point, A, B. If you, if they ask us what is the shortest distance or displacement, displacement is the shortest distance. So, what is the shortest distance? There are many ways, there are infinite amount of ways we can go from A to B. We can go like this, we can go in a circular manner. But the shortest distance is when we connect a straight line, then this is known as the shortest distance. And we also know one more thing that if uh, if the shortest distance, see, the thing is, when a shortest distance from a point to the line is a perpendicular, 
we also know that the shortest distance distance to a line from a point is perpendicular to the line let me explain this so the shortest distance to a line from a point this is a line the shortest distance to the line suppose this is one point over here and this is a line over here so now according to this the shortest distance the shortest distance we know that it is a straight line so if we draw a straight line we are saying that the shortest distance to a line from a point is perpendicular hence this angle will be 90 degree so we know these two theorems why because we have already read our lower classes shortest distance between two points is a straight line the shortest distance between two points here let us take this is a point <coughs> and this point lies on line so then we know that theorem that the shortest distance is a perpendicular to the circle so to the line so this is 90 degree to the line over here so now how are we going to prove the theorem according to the theorem this ac is perpendicular to ob now to prove that we are going to use the contradiction method now what is a contradiction method contradiction method is we are stating something we are giving a statement and then later on we are trying to prove that statement wrong hence the statement is right same thing we do for proving irrational numbers like prove root 2 is irrational first we assume that root 2 is a rational number then we try our best to prove that this is not a rational number if it is not a rational number then what is it it is an irrational number so hence we are going to use that same method to find out is this theorem correct or not for that what we are going to do we are going to do some construction construction assume points b dash b double dash and b triple dash on the tangent ac and join them with the center with the center so we are assuming three points let us assume first point as b dash I am taking B dash over here. B dash. Now they have said us to join them. We are not actually going to join them. Let us just do a dotted joining. Okay. Now they are telling us to assume another point B double dash. B double dash, let us assume it somewhere else. Let us assume it over here. B double dash. Let me join them. And then one more point is B triple dash. Let us assume B triple dash is over here. Now, what we find that, we find B dash, B double dash, no, not like this, O B dash, O B double dash and O B triple dash are greater than O B dash, O B. What is the mean? Let me tell you. We know that O B is the radius. Now, we don't know that radius is the shortest point or not. We don't know anything, we are just proving it from scratch. We know that OB is the length, OB is the radius. Now when we are taking any another point than B, when you are taking B dash, now B dash is over here. OB is the radius and OB dash is another line segment. If you see the image properly, we can find that OB dash is greater than OB. How is it greater? Because B is a line which is on the circle. B is a point that is on the circle and B dash is a point which is away from the circle. If B is a point which is on the circle, then the distance between the center will be the radius. Hence, this OB is the radius. What is this? It is the radius. Okay. Now, when we are taking the distance of OB dash, then we have to travel the radius distance plus some additional distance. This is the radius. This is R from here to here. And this is some additional distance X. So, OB is R. OB is R and OB dash is R plus X. Now which is more greater? OB dash is greater. Which is least, which is the lesser one? OB is the lesser one. Hence, if you take OB double dash, if you see OB double dash, still this is the radius and OB double dash is more than radius. This is the radius, OB dash is more than the radius. Hence, we can say that OB dash, OB double dash and OB triple dash are greater than OB. 
Thus, we can say that OB is the shortest distance between them. Between them means between the point O and point B, uh, between point O and any point on the tangent. Hence, we can say that OB is perpendicular. Why? Because we use this theorem. The shortest distance, shortest distance, shortest distance. OB is the shortest distance. So OB, this OB is the shortest distance which is perpendicular to the line. This line is perpendicular. So hence we can say that OB dash is perpendicular to AB. Hence we have proved the theorem right. So now what we have to do right now is, we don't need to prove this theorem anymore, but they might ask this in the exams. What we are going to do is, we are going to use this theorem in many problems. But before moving on to the problem, we are going to discuss one more theorem and that is very important theorem. It has a big proof, I mean, not big proof, but a logical proof as well. So let us see the second theorem and then we will go to the examples. So let us see. So now let us move on to the second theorem of this chapter and the last theorem. The length of tangent drawn from external point to a circle are equal. Before moving on to prove the theorem, we have to first note, uh, we have to first understand what is a tangent drawn from outside the circle? So suppose we are not proving the theorem right now. We are just seeing at the concept. This is a circle. We have a point over here, point P. The question is from a point outside the circle. This is a circle. This point is outside the circle. From this point, how many tangents can I draw? Answer is two tangents. One tangent we can draw like this. Let it be P A and one more tangent we can draw like this. I mean this is looking like a secant but so from one single point two tangents can be drawn P A and let this point be P B. Now many people think that this tangent is touching the circle at a this much long distance. Does it mean that it is more than one point? No. If a tangent is touching a circle and it is crossing it, then we consider everything as a single point. What I mean to say is a tangent touches a circle at only a single point. Now, from here what we understand, let this be a circle of center O. We understand that if we take a circle and we take any point on a uh, like outside the circle, we are taking a point P this is outside the circle. From a point outside the circle, two tangents can be drawn. One is P A and one is P B. Both are the tangents. Now the question given is, our theorem is, the length of tangent, length of tangent drawn from external point to a circle are equal. Length of tangent from an external point. This is a tangent. P A is one, uh, sorry, this is a point. P is a point. P A is one tangent. P B is one tangent. Length of the tangent is this one. So, the length of the tangent tangents drawn from external point to a circle are equal. So, we have to prove how we are going to, what we have to prove? We have to prove P A is equals to P B. How are we going to prove that? So, let me write that over here actually. To prove P A is equals to P B. This is what we have to prove over here. So how are we going to prove it? To prove we have to use two things. First thing we have to do some construction and second thing we have to use the first theorem. Let me explain you how. So first we are going to do construction. What construction? First one is join A O comma B O and P O. So we are going to join A O then we are going to join BO and then we are going to join PO. Now from here also many points can come out. What are the points? Okay, we will discuss those points after the theorem is done. Join AO, BO and PO. This line, this line and this line are joined. Now what do we see? We see two triangles over here. Then it means that we are going to, we have to prove some congruency between them. We have discussed congruency a lot a time ago. So, now what we have to actually do here is, we have to prove that PA and PB are equal. PA is a part of a triangle AOP and PB is a part of triangle POB. If we have to prove two things equal from two different triangles, how do we do it? We use congruency. Now, 
how are we going to apply congruency on these both triangles? So, first of all, let us take the triangle, triangle AOP and triangle BOP. AOP and BOP. Now, this is what? This is the center. What is A? Where is A? A is a point on the circle. Distance between the center and a point on the circle is known as radius. Hence, OA is a radius and OB is also a radius. So, hence we can write that OA is equal to OB. Why? Because it is radius. OA and OB. Next. Next, what do we have? OP. OP is equal to OP. Why? Because it is common. In these both triangles, OP is common and hence OP is equal. Now, what is the third thing which we have to use over here? Third thing which we have to use is the theorem 1. Now, what was the theorem 1? Theorem 1 was that when you take a tangent, when you take a radius which falls on the tangent, it makes perpendicular angle. It makes 90 degree. PA is a radius, sorry, PA is a tangent, OA is a radius. Hence, this angle is supposed to be 90 degree. How is it 90 degree? Because of theorem 1. And then, if you take this triangle, PB is a tangent, OB is a radius. Hence, this is also 90 degree. Then we can say that angle OAP is equal to angle OBP. Why? 90 degree. Why? Because radius subtends 90 degree to the tangent. The radius subtends 90 degree to the tangent. So hence we all did you find OA is equal to OB. OA and OB are equal. OP is equal to OP. OP and OB are equal. And then angle OAP is equal to angle OBP. OAP and OBP are equal. Now how are we going to prove? What is the congruency which you are going to use? See, what we see is side, side angle. So here we should not use SSS. We should not use SAS. What we can see is, this is a 90 degree. If it is 90 degree, can we say triangle AOP is a right angle triangle? In right angle triangle, in this triangle which is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is OP. Now if hypotenuse are equal, it is a 90 degree, then how do we prove it congruent? We can prove that angle AOP is congruent to triangle DOP by RHS congruency. Right? right hand side hypotenuse side congruency so this hypotenuse side is the common and it is right angle so hence we can say that these two triangles are congruent now since triangle AOP is congruent to triangle BOP triangle AOP and triangle BOP are congruent then we can say that angle AOP is equal to angle BOP this is one very important conclusion. This angle, when a point, when a point which is outside the circle drawn, draws a tangent towards the circle with the center O, then at the center it subtends equal angle. It means that this angle and this angle are equal. Angle AOP and angle BOP are equal. This is also very important. We are going to use this in the problems later on in the next section of the video. Angle AOP and angle BOP. This angle and this angle are equal. Then what we can say? Angle APB, sorry, angle APO is equal to angle BPO. This is also a very important uh, result. Angle APO and angle BPO. This angle and this angle are also equal. How do we say that? Now how do we write that in a sentence? When a point which is outside the circle subtends a tangent at a circle with the center O, when we join the center with the point P, the line divides the angle into two equal parts or the line acts as an angle bisector for point P. We found that this angle and this angle are equal, this angle and this angle are equal. From congruency, we can also say that AP is equal to BP. Hence, proof. So, the lengths of tangent drawn from external point to a circle are equal. PA and PB are equal. This we have to prove and this we have proved it over here. Now, how did we do it? First of all, we joined. We did a construction. We joined OA, OB and OP. After joining, we found that the two triangles are formed. 
Then what we have to do is we have to prove the congruency between both the triangles. We prove the congruency using RHS congruency. And since both the triangles are congruent, the corresponding angles, corresponding sides are also equal. Avoid the corresponding angles, angle AOP and angle BOP are equal. This angle and this angle are equal. How are they equal? Because these both are congruent triangles. What do we say? That this point, when draws a tangent at the center with the radius, uh, radius of a circle with center O, then it subtends equal angle. Equal angle in the sense this angle and this angle are equal. And when the line joins the center to the point, the line acts as an angle bisector. This line and this line are separate and equal. And then also we can say that AP and BP are equal. Hence, this theorem is also proved. The theorem, the line length of the tangent drawn from external point to a circle are equal. Hence, it is proved. Now, we are going to go on some proving questions and then we will end the video. So, I hope you will understand the questions. So, let us see. So now let us move on to the first and the most basic question of the of today's video. The question is that a tangent PQ at a point P of a circle of radius 5 cm. What is it? A tangent PQ at a point P of circle of radius 5 cm. The radius of the circle is 5 cm. Meets a line at the center O at a point Q such that OQ is 12 cm to find the length PQ. If you read the question as such, it is very confusing. But first, what you have to do is draw the diagram according to the question. They have given a tangent is PQ at a point P of the circle of radius 5 cm. So, there is a circle with radius 5 cm. Let us take this is the radius that is 5 cm. Okay. A tangent PQ at a point P of a circle meets the line at center O. So they have said that a point P is on the circle. Okay, It means that there is a tangent like this. P, Q. Let me explain once again. But after reading the question. Meeting meets a line at the center O at a point Q such that O Q is 12 cm. Okay. Center is O. So the center of the circle is O. This tangent meets the center O at point Q. Okay. Then this Q and this O meet like this. Such that OQ is 12 cm. This OQ is 12 cm. Okay. This is the actual diagram. Now we have to find PQ. This length we have to find. From here the question is very easy. We have to use the high, uh, Pythagoras theorem. But first you have to understand how did we get to this diagram. They are given the tangent is PQ. Now, if the give tangent is PQ, we have infinite many ways of drawing PQ, right? So we can draw like this or like this, any ways. We can also draw PQ as such, PQ. We can also draw PQ like this, P and this Q. All are correct actually. But they are given that PQ at point P of a circle. It means that this point P is on the circle. This point P is on the circle. This point over here, this is P. Hence, the tangent PQ means there is a tangent which is PQ. Q is somewhere away, Q is elsewhere, but P point is on the circle of the radius 5 cm. Meets a line at center O. Now this tangent meets the line at center O. This tangent meets the at the center O. So now we have to find the length of PQ and they have given that OQ is 12 cm. How is it meeting? It is meeting by using a line and then we have to find the length of PQ. Let us suppose this is X. Now we can see that a triangle is formed over here. So in triangle OPQ, OPQ using Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem or hypotenuse theorem, we can say that OQ square is equal to OP square plus PQ square. OQ square means 12 square. 12 square is equal to OP square means 5 square. 5 square plus PQ square, you have to find it, let's take it as X square. 12 square is 144, minus 5 square is 25, is equal to X square. 4 minus 5, we have uh, 144 minus uh, 25. So 14 here, we have 8 and then 13, 11. So this is 9. 9 and then 13 minus 2, 11. X square. Now x square is uh, 119 and x is equal to under root of 119. 
So this x length is actually nothing but which is root 119 centimeters because everything is centimeter. Okay, what did we do? The most important thing in proving questions as well as these type of questions is drawing the diagram. So tangent PQ at a point P of the circle, it means it is on the circle of radius 5 cm with the center O. This tangent meets the center O at point Q and the length OQ is actually given as 12 cm. We have to find the PQ. We can see that there is a right angle. Now again one more question. How did we find that this is 90 degree using theorem 1? How did we use the theorem? See, we used the theorem 1 but we didn't even identify it. QP is a tangent, OR is a, uh, OP is a radius. QP tangent, OR radius, tangent radius, tangent and radius. They make 90 degree with each other. Since they make 90 degree with each other, we can use the Pythagoras theorem in this problem. Hence, this was our first problem. Now, let us move on to the second problem of this, uh, like of the tropic circles. So now, we are going to do our second question over here. A quadrilateral ABCD drawn to circumscribe a circle. Prove AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. Now here we have to first of all draw the figure and then we have to do the proving work. First of all we have to understand the meaning of circumscribe. Circumscribe means covering it as much as possible. Circumscribe means you are trying to cover that shape as much as it is possible. Because if we take a circle, no, let me draw the diagram itself, then we will understand the meaning of circle. Quadrilateral is drawn. Okay. First of all, let us have a circle over here. Okay. Now we have to draw quadrilateral. Since they did not mention any specific quadrilateral, we can take any quadrilateral, random quadrilateral. So, let it be something like this. We, okay, let us change this thing. Hence, this is our quadrilateral for now. Okay. Now, what is circumscribe? As I said, circumscribe means we have to cover the shape as much as possible. Or the shape, on that shape we have to draw something. In surface area and volume chapter, again we will be using the word circumscribing a lot. That circumscribe will mean that on one shape you are keeping another shape so over here we can see that there is a circle on the circle we are keeping a quadrilateral and we are keeping it in such a way that most of its part is covered because for sure we cannot cover the whole circle with a quadrilateral hence we need to cover the maximum part and if you are covering the maximum part we are noticing there are some tangents okay they are given a quadrilateral is a b c d let us name it a b c and d let us name the point of contacts as p Q, R and S. Okay. Now the quadrilateral is A, B, C, D and the point of contacts are P, Q, R and S. Okay. Now we have to use the theorem 2 over here. We don't need to specify the theorem. We can just directly use it. So first of all, we should add that to given. What is given? A, B, C, D quadrilateral circumscribe circle with center O like uh, center O let it have a center O okay. now what we notice over here the most important point is A, B, C and D A point, B point, C point and D point are the points which are outside the circle so CR is a tangent CQ is a tangent and these two tangents are equal according to the theorem 2. What did we do? This is a circle. This is a point P. P A, which is like this P A and P B. This tangent and this tangent are equal. Similarly, C Q C R is equal. P B P Q are equal. A P A S are equal and D S D R are equal. So hence what did we use over here? We use the theorem 2 over here to prove that these two tangents are equal. So we are going to write everything which we find from here. And this thing will be writing under given only. Or we can say from the figure. From the figure, what can we say? We can say that AP is equals to AS. Now one point to be noted is we have to follow an order over here. For example, if you are writing AP is equals to AS. So we are writing AP first, right? So let us write AP over here and AS second. 
then suppose you are proving BP is equal to BQ, then BP is equal to BQ. It should be in a perfect order because if you write BQ is equal to BP, BQ is equal to BP, both are correct, actually it is correct. But the thing is in the last we have to add everything up. If you add it in a wrong manner, then the problem might get extended, it might get too long. We can do it still, but it might get too long. So instead of writing BQ is equal to BP, we are going to write BP is equal to BQ. Okay. Now we can write CQ is equal to CR. CQ is equal to CR. This order is not correct because over here we have Q at the right hand side, here the Q is in the left hand side. So again we are changing the order into CR is equal to CQ. Now we have DR is equal to DS. DR is equal to DS. C. S is was in the right hand side, here also S came in the right hand side. Here P was in the right hand side, P came in the right hand side. So what we saw from all these points, AP is equal to AS. This length and this length are equal, correct. BP is equal to BQ. BP, BQ, equal, correct. CR is equal to CQ. CR, CQ, correct. And then we have DR is equal to DS. DR is equal to DS. Now what I am going to do is LHS plus RHS. So every LHS term and every RHS term we are going to add. How we are going to do it? AP plus BP plus CR plus DR is equal to AS plus BQ plus CQ plus DS. Now the thing is, we have to prove AB plus CD, AD plus DC. A, B, C and D. But we are having P, Q, R and S also. So what are we going to do? Nothing. We, are, we don't have to worry about that. We just keep on doing our work and these all the terms will get cancelled. Okay. Now we have A, P plus B, P. A, P plus B, P. We can see that A, P plus B, P is equal to A, B. So this thing we can write as A, B. We have C, R plus D, R. C, R plus D, R. C, R plus D, R is equal to C, D. So C, D is equal to AS plus DS, this thing, AS and DS. AS plus DS is equal to AD plus BQ plus CQ. BQ, CQ, BQ plus CQ is BC. Hence, we can say that AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. Hence, proved. So, that's what we had to prove, right? AD, AB plus CD is equal to AD plus BC. Hence, proved. So what did we do over here? As in, in circles and in triangles, usually they give the figure but most of the cases they won't give us the diagram. So we have to look at the question properly and then we have to draw the diagram. They care that a quadrilateral circumscribe a circle. This is a circle, a quadrilateral is covering this circle. They did not mention which quadrilateral helps you can draw a random shape or if you want you can draw a rectangle square whatever you want. But it should have four sides. So from the figure we use the theorem number two. P, B, B, uh, sorry, AP is equal to AS. AP is equal to AS. We have to note in mind that the sides which have the almost same letter. For example, P over here, P over here. Why did we do that? Because we added AP and BP directly. If you keep BP at this side, it might become difficult to do. Uh, it might even not be uh, done. And one more thing, there are many ways to solve this problem. Many people take this DS is equal to X and then this also X. There are so many methods, various methods to solve the question, but this is a method which I prefer. That is why I use this method to solve it. AP plus BP. AP plus BP will give you AB. So what did we do? AP is AS. AP equal to AS. BP equals to BQ. BP is equal to BQ. CR is equal to CQ. CR and CQ. And then DR and DS. DR and DS. So hence, we use the theorem number 2. Then we added the LHS and RHS. If we add them, we, get, we got our answer. Now let us move on to the next question and that might be a little bit complicated one. So let us see. So now we are going to move on to the most complicated question of the 10th class textbook of circles and this is one of the most important models of question. Here this is our diagram and we have to find AB and AC. We have to find this length AB and this length AC. If you look at the question from the outer side you find that the question is very easy but when you try to solve it we have to do a very long method action. So here the thing is there is a circle and there is a triangle which is circumscribing the circle. Now I hope you understood the meaning of circumscribe. Now here there are three tangents which are drawn to the circle. Tangent AC, tangent AB and tangent BC. These are the three tangents drawn. Now they are given the length, this is 6 cm, this is 8 cm. Hence we can say that the whole length BC is 14 cm. Okay. 
Now, why did they give it separately as 8 cm and 6 cm? Because if we know BD is equal to 8 cm, then we can say that BE is also 8 cm. So, from the diagram, from figure, we can write that BD is equal to BE and CD is equal to CF. CD and CF are equal, BD and BE are equal. So, hence, B E is equals to 8 centimeter and C F is equals to 6 centimeter. Okay. Now this length C F over here 6 centimeter and B E over here 8 centimeter. Now let us suppose A F is equals to A E. This is X centimeter. Because of course if B D is equals to B E, B D is B E. Uh, CD is equal to CF, AF is equal to FE and AF is equal to FE. Hence, AF is equal to FE that is equal to X. Okay. Now, what do we have to find? We have to find the 6 plus X and 8 plus X. So, to use this, we have to go on to a ninth class topic that is Heron's formula. Heron's formula. Why are we using this? It is because we don't know anything about this circle, uh, about this figure. We only know its length and we don't know anything else. If you know this 6 cm, if you take the 6 minus x, then if you add them 6 plus x into 6 minus x, everything will get cancelled out. So, it is difficult to solve it in that method and hence the most prescribed method is using the Heron's formula. Now, there is a video about Heron's formula in our YouTube channel, you can go and watch that. But here let me give a recap. Heron's formula is used to find the semi-perimeter and the area. Semi-perimeter means A plus B plus C by 2. It means if this is the side A, side B, side C. So, side A plus side B plus side C is equal to semi-perimeter by 2. By 2 is equal to semi-perimeter. And if you want to find the area, area is under root of S into S minus A into S minus B into S minus C. This is the Heron's formula which was in 9th class which we have learned. So, we have to use this formula to find out the area. That area. Now, they have, we have to find out the area, right? But in the question, we don't know what is the area. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to use one trick. The trick is, we are going to cut this triangle into three different triangles. Okay. Now, what are the three triangles which you see? Now, let me just write it over here. Now, now what we have to do is construction. What is the construction? Join. Join what? OA, OB and OC. OA, OB and OC. So let me join it actually perfectly. This is OC, OA, OB. Now if you look at this properly, we will get three triangles. Three triangles are formed. What are the three triangles? Triangle AOC comma triangle AOB comma triangle BOC AOC this triangle AOB this triangle this triangle AOB AOC and COB so these three triangles are formed now from the basic theorem by the basic laws we know that the area of this figure total area of this figure is equal to area of this part plus area of this part plus area of this part so Total, for example, this is a figure, this is a triangle. This triangle I am dividing it into three parts. Now the total triangle's area is equal to this area plus this area plus this area. If you sum all these three area, you will get the area of the whole triangle. That is what we are going to use it over here. Okay? Three triangles, triangle AOB, triangle uh, AOB, AOC and triangle BOC. Now, area of triangle ACB. Area of triangle ACB. A, C, B or let us take it A, B, C, B, much better. Now, if you want to find the area of triangle A, B, C, A, B, C, the whole triangle, that is equals to area of triangle A, O, C, which let me draw it as a triangle, triangle A, O, C plus triangle plus area of triangle A, O, B plus area of triangle B, O, C. Now, uh, if you want to find the area of triangle ABC, ABC whole triangle area 
is equals to area of triangle AOC. AOC plus AOB plus AOB and plus BOC. BOC. So sum of all the three small triangles is equals to the area of the whole triangle. Now using Heron's formula, we have to find the semi perimeter. Semi perimeter is A plus B plus C by 2. The question is why are we using this Heron's formula? Because See, we know the area of triangle AOC. We can find it. How? AOC, half into base into height. Half into base is what? 6 plus S. Uh, X, what is the height? Height is the radius. Okay. The radius is the height. Here also, height is the radius and the base is X plus A. Here also, height is 4 cm and the radius is 14 cm. But the question is area of triangle ABC. We cannot as such find the triangle area of triangle ABC. Why? Because area of triangle ABC means half into base into height. Half into, here base is 14 into now what will you take for height? This is 4 cm. Let us assume this is 4, this is also 4, 8 cm. We don't know this length. Hence we cannot find the area of the whole triangle and the area of the triangle is not specified in the question as well. So since we don't know anything about area, we are going to use two areas. Area of triangle, suppose now we got area of triangle is equal to x and somewhere else we got area of triangle is equal to y. Area of triangle and area of triangle are common. Hence we can say x is equal to y. The same strategy we are using over here. Area of the whole triangle is equal to this big equation and then area of triangle we are finding it using the Heron's formula. Then those both areas we are going to equate them. If we equate them we will get the value of x. After finding x value we can find AC and BC easily. We will just see how do we do that. Now we, are the, uh, we see that semi perimeter is equal to A plus B plus C by 2. Now let us AB is equal to B and uh, B C equals to C. Now semi perimeter is equal to A plus B plus C by 2. We are assuming this is A, this is B and this is C. So now what is A? A is 6 plus X. What is B? B is A B. A B is 8 plus X. And what is C? B C. B C we know it is 14 by 2. So hence 6 plus x plus 8 plus x plus 14. 6 plus 8 is 14. 14 plus 14 is 28. 28 plus 2x by 2. We are taking 2 common. 14 plus x by 2. Hence, semi perimeter is equal to 14 plus x. We got the value of s. What did we do? Semi perimeter is equal to a plus b plus c by 2. We assumed ac is equal to a. This value is a. This value is B and this value is C. 6 plus X plus 8 plus X plus 14 by 2 is equal to semi perimeter. After solving everything, we took 2 common and then we got 14 plus X. Now, according to Heron's formula, S is equal to, no sorry, A, area. Area. Area of what? Now, the area is actually under root of S into S minus A into S minus B into s minus c. This thing we are going to substitute the values of a, b and c. That is equals to under root of. Now here I am not going to explain that concept of bracket in plus and minus because when we are taking a, we are taking 6 plus x. So when we are doing minus, we take it inside a bracket. Minus of bracket 6 plus s. So when we open it, it will be minus 6 minus x. I will explain it again. s is what? 14 plus x. Into 14 plus x. Here we have minus 6 minus x. Again, 14 plus x minus 8 minus x. And again we have 14 plus x minus 14. Now what do we do over here? It is actually 14 plus x. Look, s into s minus a. 14 plus x minus. What is a value? 6 plus x. 6 plus x. Hence what do we do? 14 plus x minus 6 minus x. Minus 6 minus x. This is what I have written over here. So, this is the equation which we got. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to just simplify it. That is, 14 plus x. Now, x minus x. Plus x and minus x will get cancelled. 14 minus 6 is 8. Into. Plus x minus x again gets cancelled. 14 into... Uh, uh, 14 minus 8 is equal to actually 6 into here also plus 14 minus 14 gets cancelled and here we have x. So hence what do we get? We get under root of uh, 14 plus x into 8 6 are 48, 48x. 
So now this is what this is the area. So hence we can tell that area is equal to under root of 14 plus x into 48x. Now what we have to do? We have the question. See, we have area over here. This is one area, and this is another area. Here area is common in both of them. Hence we are equating this equation and this equation. So hence we will get under root 14 plus x into 48x is equals to area of triangle AOC plus AOB plus BOC. Triangle AOC plus BOC plus AOB. Now, how do we write the areas? The question is that. We know that area is equal to half into base into height. So when you are taking area of triangle AOC, AOC, now area of triangle AOC area is equal to half into in triangle AOC base is 6 plus x. 6 plus x into here height. What is the height? This is the height. 4 cm. Why is it 4? Because the radius is 4 cm. So into 4. Hence we will get area of triangle AOC is equal to 6 plus x into 2. That is 12 plus 2x. Let me explain what we did. Area of triangle AOC is half into base into height. Half into base is what? 6 plus x. And what is the height? 4. So 2 and 4 gets cancelled. Uh, 2 is 2, 6 are 12 plus 2x. So 12 plus 2x is the area of triangle AOC. So let me write it over here. This is 12 plus 2x. Now plus. Now area of triangle AOB. Triangle AOB is over here. This triangle. So area of triangle AOB is equal to again half into base into height. In triangle AOB base is 8 plus x. So half into uh, 8 plus x into again here height is 4. 4. Again 2 also to 2 so. So you will get 16 plus 2x. So area of triangle AOB is 16 plus 2x. Triangle AOC half into base into height. Triangle AOB half into base into height. Now going to triangle BOC. BOC. Last triangle. Triangle BOC. How do we find the area of triangle BOC? Triangle BOC area is half into base into height. Here base is 14, height is 4. So half into 14 into 4, 2 ones are 2 are. So area of triangle BOC is what? 28. Because 14 twos are 28. That is what we did. <coughs> triangle AOC. AOC half into 6 plus x into 4. That is 12 plus 2x. Area of triangle AOB half into 8 plus x into 4. That is equal to 16 plus 2x. And area of triangle BOC half into 14 into 4. That is equal to 28. Now, under root 14 plus x into 48x is equal to area of this plus this plus this. Now, 12 plus 2x plus 16 plus 2x plus 28. This is the area. Hence, we will get under root 14 plus x into 48x. 12 plus 16, 16 plus 12 is 28, 28 plus 28 is 56, 56 plus 4x. Now this is the equation which we have got, 14 plus x into 48x is equal to 48 plus 4x. Now we are going to rub this thing because we know these points are easy with it. Why we are doing everything, we are doing everything to just to find the value of x. So now here we have this equation, 14 under root of 14 into 14 plus x into 48x is equal to 56 plus 4x. Now here what I am going to do, in this under root 14 plus x into 48x is equal to, in this equation we can take 4 as common. What will happen if we take 4 common, it will become 1 14 plus x. 4 into 14 plus x is equal to 56 plus 4x. 14 for the 56 and 4, 4 into x is equal to 4x. So hence we can write 4 into 14 plus x. Now what we are going to do, we are going to square on both the sides. If we square on both the sides, here we are going to square. After squaring, this root will get converted into this square. 
So hence we will get 14 plus x into 48x is equals to 4 square. What is 4 square? 16. 16 into 14 plus x whole square. Now this 14 plus x and this 14 plus x whole square gets cancelled. Hence we will get 48x is equals to 16 into 14 plus 16x. Now 16 into 14 we have to do over here. Let us do. Two twenty-four. Yes, two twenty-four. From here we can find the value of x. So forty-eight minus sixteen. Thirty-two. Thirty-two x is equals to two twenty-four. So x value is two twenty-four by thirty-two. Two twenty-four by thirty-two. How do we do it? 112 by 16, 56 by 8, 7. So x is equal to 7 will be. After doing everything, we will get the value of x is equal to 7. Now we can take a b. A b is equal to where can we write? Let us write it over here now. After this, we are coming over here. A b. A b is equal to x plus 8. So 8 plus x. That is equal to 8 plus 7 that is equal to 15 and AC is equal to x plus 6. x plus 6 that is equal to 7 plus 6 that is equal to 30 centimeter centimeter. Hence we find that the value of AB is 15 centimeter and the value of AC is 13 centimeter. This was the longest problem in the 10th class circles topic. This is the triangle. This is the figure which is given over here. First we wrote that the given values and then we found that AF is equal to AE, CF is equal to CD and BD is equal to BE. After taking the values, we wrote it as X and X. We applied the concept of area. The area of the whole figure is equal to area of this small triangle plus area of this small triangle plus area of this small triangle. So, when you add the area of small triangles, you will get the area of the bigger triangle. That's what we did over here. We found the area of these small triangles as uh, 12 plus 2X, 16 plus 2X and 28. Then we use the concept of Heron's formula. Why? Because we did not know the area of the figure. To find out the area of the figure, we needed to equate it with something else. And what is the something else over here? It is Heron's formula. So using the Heron's formula, we got this equation. 14 plus x into 48 x is equal to 16 into 14 plus x whole square. Cancelling them, we got 48 x is equal to 16 x plus 224. And then x value finally we got 7. If we got x value, we can write AB is equal to x plus 8, that is 7 plus 8, and AC is equal to 7 plus 6. So AB is 15 centimeter and AC is equal to 13 centimeter. So we got, hence we got our answer. So this was today's video. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. In today's video, we covered the whole circle topic with some important questions. So we'll see you next time in the next video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do subscribe to the channel, like this video. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.